Hello and welcome. Welcome to Yoga Solutions with me, Mark Jack, with Eva. Um, I wanted to share a meditation with you today. It's, um, it's a much neglected aspect of practice and it's kind of the most essential one. Now, when I'm, when I'm teaching uh, the physical side of yoga, if you like, um, then uh, the thing that interferes mostly is the kind of jumbliness of the mind, the, the mind's propensity to jump in this direction and that direction to try and work out what's going on. And actually, the, the, the thing can be entirely understood in a direct kind of awareness way if the mind can rest at the center of the thing and receive information from their bodies and the uh, experience um, presence to everything around them, you see. And so, and, and meditation is the fast track route to develop that skill of how to be in your center whilst taking, whilst um, being aware, wholeheartedly aware of everything that's going on. So, um, yes, yeah, so I wanted to share a meditation with you. Now, the, the problem I've had with meditation in the past, when I first kind of broached the subject, um, I knew it would be good for me, but I didn't know how to do it. Um, because the, the basic idea is we're, we're trying to um, quieten the mind. And how, how do you do that? How do you do that with your mind? <laughs> if, you, if your mind is busy jumping around, you, you kind of can't force it to stop. You can create conditions where it might stop. And one of those conditions is comfort. Uh, but usually that just leads to falling asleep. And the thing about, um, the thing, the benefit that you get, and the biggest benefit you get from meditation is in uh, crossing that complication of being upright and active whilst having a quiet mind. And uh, most of us don't really have that experience. If we're up and active, then the mind is jumping around, making things happen. And it's also the source of the physical issues, as in the mind is a control of holding the body in this shape or that shape or, you know, following the intention of the mind. Um, <clears throat> so meditation really, uh, you can have a lovely experience lying down and relaxing if you can keep yourself present. Um, but a more useful, more transformational practice is to be able to relax upright, which in... Uh, most understand m most people's understanding of yoga is kind of what the whole idea behind doing physical yoga is for is to make you fit to be able to sit <laughs> so um, yes okay so uh, what I'm going to share with you is is best done soon after you wake up and um, the, re the re before coffee or anything like that and um, now, since I've been doing this before having my coffee, it's been so much more useful for me. It's, it's made a huge difference. And um, the, the coffee, when I have my morning, I, li I like a coffee, you know, so, so when I have my morning coffee afterwards, it, it's less of an adrenal hit and more of a refreshing enjoyment thing. And um, yes, it serves much better. But, um, you know, obviously I've crafted a life for myself where I can have a bit of time in the morning. I, I'm not a morning person, so... Um, so that, that gives me the luxury of being able to meditate in the morning. But um, yes, if you can find a way of doing this first thing, uh, soon after you wake up. And my suggestion is if, you, if you're if you not practiced at uh, finding uprightness in a comfortable fashion, if you're doing this in bed, you, can, you need a load of pillows all around you and on your lap either side of you so you can make a, an upright chair for yourself with your elbows and your arms uh, propped up because that um, releasing your weight through that will help your upper body be upright without you having to hold yourself up. Um, and that, that's the other caveat. If you are holding yourself up to meditate, you miss the point of the whole thing. Um, you're just practicing holding yourself up. So, um, yeah, so that, that, that's a good starting point. First thing in the morning, soon after you've woken up, Prop yourself up if, if that's 
if, if you find it difficult to relax upright, and most of us do, it's taken me 30 years to learn how to do it, so, so you don't lose any points for needing to prop yourself up. And I was behind either side on your lap, so you've got somewhere to lean your arms so your upper body can be like. And then um, the, yeah, the, key, the key is uprightness, and that, the, the hardest part of that for most people is the head. So if the, the intention behind meditation is you need to be upright and you need to learn to relax, and then meditation can begin. So, so you've got yourself propped up, and, and after 30 years of practice, I can prop myself up just with the weight of my hands and my lap. And my back doesn't have to hold me up and, and whatnot, whatnot. But I still have a propensity to either hold my head up or hang my head down, like most people do. So there's a, a trick you can do that begins the process of quietening the mind. And it's called Shambhavi Mudra. There, there are two versions. Uh, Shambhavi Mudra is w when um, the eyes are uh, pointed either up inside your head or down, like you're looking through your body. And um, both of those versions of Shambhavi Mudra, and, and you have an option of which one you do, and you can swap between them as you follow my meditation, if you choose. Um, I, I'll explain a bit more later. But um, both, of those, both of those options have your eyes and your head, um, your eyes and your face in um, in different orientations. So, you know, in, in daily life, your eyes and your and your head go together. You see, you look down, you look up, and you do this all by moving from the head, mostly, most people. And uh, that that's an indication of being centered in your head, as in you're centered in your thinking. And what we want to do is is to um, quieten that binary thing of the the brain the brain's assessment of things so you can so you can um rest at the center of things just seeing things as they are and this trick with shambhavi mudra where the face and head are pointing in different directions have different orientations to the eyes um is the beginning of taking the mind's control away um it, it gives you a physical reason a structural reason, a, a, you know, a, a physics reason, a balance reason to let go of control. And uh, at the same time, it, it can give you the direct somatic experience of what releasing, uh, holding of your head can do for you. So um, <sighs> version, the version I'm currently favoring, but it requires being able to be quite upright um, without too much strain, and you, if you were doing this in bed with your cushions, you'd lean into your cushions to cause this to happen, is to have the face up, so that the weight of the head pulls your face up, the weight of the head behind you. So, uh, you see what I mean? If, you, if you're like this, you don't want to do that one, because that's going to hurt your neck. But if you're propped up, and, and you're using your cushions to be upright, then resting the face up and the head back shouldn't be too complicated and the way then the weight of the head keeps the face up rather than rather than your neck holding the head up if that makes sense and with that orientation of the head and face you look down through your body and i, I don't mean just uh, strain the eyes to hold the eyes i don't just mean strain the eyes to hold the eyes in a downward pointing direction so i'll fix my mic so it doesn't rattle there we go. Uh, I, I mean, the eyes, you're trying to actually see through the front of the body, through the inside front of the body, all the way to the back of your base. So you're, you're balancing your face up by letting your body be forwards. You're using the support of your arms in some fashion. And if you've got cushions there, it's very relaxing. But your eyes, are pointing down, like you're looking through towards your sit bones, uh, along the inside of the body, down through your throat, down through, through the front of the heart, down through your belly, down through to where your sit bones touch the ground. 
And that's a way of starting to discover how gravity can help this verticality. Because you can relax in the direction that your eyes are pointing, provided that that downward direction is so that you can rest your face up in space. That's the Shambhavi Mudra that I favor. It won't necessarily be your usual idea of what relaxing down means, because for most people, relaxing down means relaxing down towards the brown, so you get heavy. But it's relaxing down through yourself, and your eyes pointing in that direction gives you an idea of what direction you're trying to rest. Okay? So face up, and uh, your involvement in this is that you are feeling your face up in space, but you are looking through your body at your sit bones in the direction that you want to relax your weight. Okay? That's the starting, that's one starting point. There's an, there's a, the opposite of that is Shambhavi, the other Shambhavi mudra is where you are doing the thing that you normally do, which is resting when, when you relax down, is you're resting the weight of the head down, but your eyes are looking up through the top of the head like you're trying to see above you. And, and what that does on a, on a physiological level is it, it reorientates the angle of the head so it's not actually heavy on the spine. And you know, most people do that. It's not heavy. It makes the head not, not heavy on the neck. And instead, because you're looking up through the top of the head, relaxed face still, with the weight of the head and face itself forwards and, and resting down, because you're looking up through the top of the head, you'll, again, you'll be forwards and up in the direction that you're looking whilst you're intending to rest the weight down towards the base behind you. Now, I, I don't find that as comfortable uh, because it's kind of my, um, my normal way of doing things. I've always been... Uh, I've always been one of these people that kind of um, likes to rest the head forwards and then lift myself up. Um, <clears throat> and, and so for me, it's more useful to do the first one um, where my face is in space and my eyes are looking through to my base. Wherever your eyes are pointing is where your attention is. So that will give you a grounding, which for me, it suits me. Then, when you've got, you found a balance that you can actually relax upright in, you can begin. You can begin to meditate. Because the meditation is still, um, it, it, there's an activity for the mind that can quieten the binary thinking. And um, you've already done a, a great deal by moving the pointing the eyes and the face in different directions, you've already done a lot to give it no choice but to rest at the center. But it's likely to leap around anyway. So meditations generally have some kind of um, center of focus, not to try and stop the mind. Some, some meditations are about watching how the mind moves. Um, that's fine. Watching the breath, that's fine. Um, you need some sort of activity for the mind to invite it to quieten and center and become still. And the most effective meditation I've ever come across, um, it was done, uh, it was given to me on a, on a, um, a, a training about uh, tachyon stuff. And um, I've, I've kind of uh, developed it in my own way based on my own understanding of, of how the body works and uh, the, the, dare I say, the energetic system, the, the, the stuff that happens um, deep inside um, along the front of the spine to do with the breath. And that, and that gives you the, the kind of clue as to how this meditation goes. So it's a systematic thing, so you, know what, so you can know what you're doing and not have to work it out. I'm going to start at least with my face up my eyes looking down. 
until I can notice, until I can tell that whatever shape I'm making, whatever, whatever unusualness of uprightness I'm feeling, support it. I'm not holding my weight up, rather I'm resting my weight down. And with the face up and the eyes down, you relax the weight of the head back, but the eyes looking down the front of the spine takes any pressure out of the neck. Okay? And what you're looking down to is the base behind you, the sit bone. This is where the meditation begins. You kind of request a, a downward pouring from above. It can be anything you like, whatever works for you um, visually or somatically. It, it could be um, a pouring down of light, a pouring down of energy. Um, it could be as straightforward as gravity. But you're inviting a downward flow through you directly into where you touch the ground is the, is the starting point. And <clears throat> the vehicle for this flow is the breath. And it's not um, different between the inhale and the exhale. So you're upright and you're resting the weight of the head back so your eyes are down, or resting the weight of the head, head and face forwards with the eyes up, whichever you prefer. Either way, you have to be balanced, so you don't need to be holding your weight up. As the breath arrives, it needs to be a vertical release from above you down into the ground below you where you touch. As the breath releases, there's a, there's a similar downward pouring from above you down into the base below you. And your job within the balancing act is to let go of any bracing. I don't mean let go of anything that you feel. You might feel the spine changing, but it must not be holding you up. You have to find a way of being able to be upright without having to hold yourself there with the spine. So you'll rely on your base, and your base is where the breath is falling through you towards and landing on as it arrives. And your base is where the breath pours through you once again as it releases from above to below. And that's level one. Your involvement physically wants to become as relaxed as if you could go to sleep if it wasn't for the activity of being with this downward flow. So if there's any jumpiness in the breath, it's because some part of your spine is given the job of holding you up. So if you find a jumpiness in the breath, a difficulty, as it arrives or as it leaves, You look for a tendency to hold your head up with your neck or to be lifting your weight away from the ground, lifting your chest away from the ground with the lower back. And you try and solve it by letting go of tension through to your base and you'll change shape in that moment. It's a vertical downward flow at the lowest speed, at the lowest frequency. And you allow it by not resisting it. The resistance is you holding yourself up. Your eyes are looking down through your body. If you're doing uh, my version of, my preferred version of Shambhavi Mudra, Whilst your face rests up so you can feel the space you're in with your face. And, but you can see through your body, all the way to your sit bones, your base, any other part of your base that's catching your weight, you can see 
if there are any blockages, if the downward pouring is interrupted by anything. And you make adjustments to get out of its way and relax into the outcome. Okay, that was number one. Part two is to continue. But this time, look at the center of your pelvic floor, space between your sit bones, your sacrum, and the underside of your pubic bone, the front. So this hammock that is between the structures that are touching the ground. And you invite, you request a downward flow, a vertical flow from above to travel through you at a, it's a higher speed, twice the speed of the first one, as you settle into it. So your eyes are with the space between your, uh, between your sit bones tail and pubis. That's where you're feeling the arriving flow from above. The vehicle for it is the breath, whether it's a, the breath coming in or the breath releasing down through you. You're just centered at your root. Eyes are down. Face needs to be relaxed up. There needs to be no holding of the head, otherwise you'll block it at the head. Your job is to let go of tension and wait, whilst being with this central vertical column of downward flow from above into your root. Through your room. And the only job is to be able to work out how to relax completely without interfering with this flow. Again, if the breath gets jumpy, it's because you're holding something unnecessarily. You need to find support. And if you've got cushions all around you, use it. And you've done that one. And I, I'm rushing through this. I would, I would spend a good three or four minutes on each one. But then you take your attention, your, your eyes, your attention. If, if your eyes are up, you can imagine your weight being around the area whilst you look towards the source of your downward flow upward. See? So that you have options with your attention. Um, I'm preferring down. It helps me relax the mind more as the face rests up in space. The next area is in your lower belly between your pelvic bones, between your pelvic bones, your sacrum and your pubis. There's a little smile in there that you can drop through. And again, you request a vertical flow of whatever it is you're feeling however you wish to describe it, through this area, this part of you, the lower belly, sacral plexus. And it's, um, it's a, uh, the key thing is the physicality of it, the relaxation of your weight, your ability to balance. And when you center in an area through, through the breath, 
what you're feeling is, is um, it could be described as energy, but that's simply a description of something that feels subtle. But what you're actually feeling is movements of the breath, and you're encouraging a freedom for that movement to occur when you take your attention. So you request a vertical flow down from above that is about one and a half times the speed of the last one. It's an ongoing vertical flow. It's just that the breath, the rhythms of breathing is kind of its engine. It's the motor that drives it. And your job is to stay in space with your faith, receiving the light or whatever you're feeling, gravity from above, whilst seeing down through you, if you're doing my preferred version of Shambhavi Mudra. And you're looking directly into that space inside your pelvis, inviting the vertical flow from above to drop down into that place and through you as you relax your weight it should not rely on your spine either your neck or your lower back you might feel stuff there but provided it's not holding you up there'll be no interference to the breath if the breath is at all jumpy it's because you're holding yourself up You look down through your body to this place <clears throat> to witness and experience the vertical flow. So the next place is the solar plexus. Uh, if, like me, you're someone that tends to hang out here, it's, um, it's the laziest way of breathing is to um, let the diaphragm drop because the ribs fall apart and the belly puffs up. Um, then you'll need to do something about that. You'll need to be able to find a way of resting into that space. <clears throat> There are many yoga solutions around this central area uh, that you can find, I expect, on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, my yoga solutions explain how, how you can find this through the breath. But there needs to be a quietening in, in this space that <clears throat> leaves the spine uh, around the kidney area free of any sensation of carrying your weight, holding your weight up. And then you invite, and then <clears throat> the face above it, if you find the appropriate Shambhavi Mudra, and I'm going to stick with eyes down and face up. Face up, feeling the space and the light above me. Eyes down, looking through my solar plexus towards the ground. <clears throat> and that describes the vertical flow through you of light, energy, gravity, whatever you like, life. And the speed of this one is about um, one and two thirds times the previous um, rate of flow. Uh, the rates of flow sort of increase in a kind of Fibonacci ratio as you travel up. Let's see. And your job throughout this part of the, this section of the meditation is to work out how to balance so that nothing is in the way of that vertical flow. Okay, so um, that should give you the idea 
Um, I, I'm adding this as a voiceover for my um, public viewers. Um, all you have to do for, for the rest of the meditation is follow the same process, centering in other chakras. So next do the heart, uh, spend some time there working out how to relax upright in the throat, third eye, and eventually the crown. Um, on the full version from where uh, premium members, uh, for a couple of the um, upper chakras, I, I change gear with my Shambhavi Mudra and uh, try out the other version because it suits me better. And the general idea is that you do that for yourself. You work out uh, at each place, at each center, which is the best arrangement for eyes and face so that you can relax in the verticality of the thing. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, make, find some use of it. I, I wouldn't just do it once and go, oh, that was nice. Um, I would practice that regularly. If you find an area that, that um, makes sense to you, that feels easy to do, practice that one for a bit to get clear about how good it is. But um, then there'll be the areas that don't make sense to you. And those will be the areas that you, you kind of hold yourself with. They'll be the areas that your spine is lifting to support you from. And uh, so they're the areas that will have to change. And they will change when, you, the, when the breath learns how to move through that place without you having to hold yourself up. Now it can be very, very informative for your body in yoga practice as well, as well as being a, a fantastic way of um, starting your day. Okay, so I hope that was useful and pleasurable and uh, I shall, uh, no more workshops this year, so I shall be back in the new year with my usual offerings. Until then, happy Christmas, happy new year, much love, bye for now.